everybody, and welcome to the newest indoor adventure in Taking Strahd Seriously, Part 14. We have been doing this for quite some time, which has been incredible, to say the least. Uh, today is July 23rd, 2019, and you are loved. Uh... I always like starting off the streams that way because I feel like it is a very important thing to remember, uh, as well as including other important things to remember, such as if you are interested in joining us for our charity stream on July 27th, that is this Friday, uh, or this coming Saturday, consider checking out the Twitter link in the chat, possibly giving it a signal boost uh, in an a attempt to get the word out there because we have some incredible prizes to give away. We have the Mighty Nine miniature set as well as all of the Pumat Soul minis. We have our Elderwood Academy mini dice chests, which look really neat. And then they got all sorts of tiny dice that come with them, which is really awesome. Uh, our dear friend streaming Sarah has also contributed a fun pin set uh, that I am going to be revealing pictures of that has a enamel pin for every one of the casters, and they look super cute. Uh, we also have a copy of Ghosts of Salt Marsh available on Roll20 from our dear friend Daddy Warbuck. So, Thank you, Daddy. Uh, all of the money that we are going to be raising is going to be going to the Trevor Project as well as the Take This Foundation. So if you are interested in possibly donating to either one of those organizations, feel free to stop by on Saturday. Uh, but if your schedule is busy and you cannot go, uh, you cannot join us on that Saturday, don't worry. Uh, from now until that point, for every new follower that we get on the channel, I'm going to be donating a dollar in your name to the tiny changes organization because i i i like that organization and i want to help give money to it but they didn't have integration set up on the on tiltify that we're using for the others so that's why i'm just going to be personally making the donation in your name so amy l kiss thank you so much for the follow uh, right before the stream started a a dollar is going to be going from your uh from me Thanks to you, to the Tiny Changes organization. Uh, with that, we also have our Discord community. Uh, so if you're interested in hanging out, you can join us on Discord. The link, of course, is in the description of this video or audio cast. Uh, or if you go to patreon.com slash indoor adventures, it's a really good way of getting everything synced up. Uh, at least as best it can for right now. Uh, and I think of that. That's it for all my spiels. Oh, merch. If you're interested in merch, go to bit.ly slash adventure merch. Get yourself something like the Blake Scar or the Arjan Scars t-shirt. We got mugs. We got hoodies. We got posters. We got all sorts of stuff that you can find at bit.ly slash adventure merch. Uh, so consider going that, helping support the show. We also, uh, like LB is pointing to, we have the Goreblast Stompfoot Gymnasium merch line. Um... Which, if you bought it early, hey, guess what? You have a piece of limited merch because we changed the image ever so slightly. So, good on you for catching that uh, while it was still early. But, that is it for me. RJ, would you like to lead us in? Hi, hey everybody. I'm RJ, and I'm playing Bartholomew, the human ranger blood hunter. Hi, I'm LB Hackamup, and I'm playing Silmi, the half-elf wizard. I am the indoor adventurer, and tonight I shall be playing Kefris Malreska, the mongrel folk barbarian. And I am Wings, your DM, your very spooky DM, uh, and I'm coming in with the recap. Last time, the Mardikovs opened their home to the Malreskas and company. Silmi gathered information about lycanthropy from the were-ravens, and with Kefris's help, Irina was able to harness divine magic for the first time and purify the poisoned wine. However, that night came with the realization that Kefris's nightmares have begun to harm him physically. The next day, having gained entrance to Kresik by delivering a shipment of wine, the group found a familiar face in the village, Steshen von Antiel. It seems that the burgomaster's son has recently deceased and he is in need of a medium. But as everyone sat down for a seance, there was a knock at the door. And through that door came a man, a very beautiful man, uh, in wearing monk's robes <laughs> and um, 
Steshin found that he was giving off a very strong celestial aura. And this man has said that he is going to bring the Burgomaster's son back to life. I'm sorry, do you deal in necromancy? I, well, I think in the most strictest of terms, that would be the correct school of magic for such a thing, but I don't think it's exactly what you're thinking of. I work only in divine magics, you see. And who is your god? The Morning Lord. I'm gonna inside check him. Welcome Go to Tuesdays. <laughs> Where we believe nothing. Uh, 16. 16? Uh, this appears to be a man with nothing to hide. Can, could I possibly do a religion check? Not necessarily to see, like, if I believe him. Because I've already, I, uh, last week I did a religion check on his gear to see that it was Morning Lord's stuff. Um, but could, ah, GB, welcome! Uh, could I possibly do a, um... A religion check to see about, uh, like, what level in the clergy he would be. Like, if he's an entry-level clergyman or if he's higher up uh, within the religious ranks of the Morning Lord people. Certainly, yes. Go for it. Okay. That is a 19. A 19. Okay. He is wearing very humble vestments. Um, you aren't familiar with this particular well, I, I guess say church, um, because it's just, it is so old. It's, it's like trying to figure out what rank your grandpa was by looking at like a very old photo. Mm, okay. Um, but like from, from what he's wearing and from how humble the vestments are, just like kind of brown, almost like burlap sackcloth, you would say it's not necessarily he's not necessarily like ranked like he's just kind of doing this on his own okay um little perturbed by that but i'm sure it'll be fine bartholomew still has his hand on his dagger as he looks over to the burgomaster to see if he wants to let this man in uh, the Burgermaster just kind of looks at you um, and kind of quirks an eyebrow and he's like, how, how is this possible? How could you possibly bring my son back to life? He's dead. Um, and the abbot will just sort of like look to you, uh, Bartholomew, as though like asking permission to enter. Oh, that's all in the Burgomaster. Does he let him, like, he gave the confirmation, like, let him in? Um, so, so what happens is that the Burgomaster looks to you, and then the Burgomaster, uh, Burgomaster looks, uh, like, there's, there's a weird look exchange. A bunch of looks exchanged, and finally, I think the Burgomaster will, uh, just sort of relent and be like, please, come in. Um, and the abbot will dip his head respectfully, he kind of has his hands folded out in front of him, um, and he will enter the domicile. Yeah, because the last thing Stetchin had said was, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> and then I checked and he was celestial, so. Yes. I'm sure if he had come back as something different, this moment would go <laughs> would have gone a lot different. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I didn't know anyone here knew how to do such magics. In fact, I don't think I've ever read of any magics that return someone from the grave, unless you are a very powerful wizard. Not a wizard, no. Are a you... cleric? Mm. Yes. Oh. Those of the, div div oh, wrong voice. Uh. <laughs> 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 German. Oh German. Ooh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dumkov, Dumkov. Uh, 
uh, those of divine power can do that. Every once in a while, uh, an adventurer with a lot of coin would come by, lamenting over the loss of a friend. Uh, it's it's uncommon to say the least, but it is possible. It is a fairly basic procedure. Oh, um, is there a body that this can be done to? Uh, apologies. I, I will need a body. And uh, the Burgermaster will just kind of like, uh, like still with this look of uncertainty on his face, um, just kind of just take a step towards one of the back rooms. What was your name? I'm sorry, we didn't catch it. Oh, I'm known as the Abbot. Just the, you don't have a name? Not here, no. Just, just the Abbot. All right. And uh, what is your temple, Abbot? He just kind of points up, and um, you are, your eyes are drawn to the window and up, and on clinging to the cliffside is the Abbey of Saint Markovia. Huh. Did we notice that on the way in? I mean, I mentioned it. Okay. In passing. Nice. Nice. Um, yes. I try not to bother the people of the city too much. Uh, is this going to... Uh, uh, did you not speak of this before to him? I just feel like... Are, are you going to require something from the Burgomaster? He's in a very compromised state, and I, I don't wish to speak for you, and she motions to the burgomaster. But I, I think that maybe we should discuss all of this before we go to the body. Of course. I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable. Right. Um, I'm not aware of how he passed. Um, Illness, the Burgermaster says. All of my children were very sickly. I see. Um, is this something that you would be interested in doing? I, I'm still disbelieving. I. If such a thing were possible, it would be amazing. How would this work with the soul situation? Um, and, and when you say that, you realize that uh, you, you'll, you'll remember the uh, the, the situation that Maybell underwent at some mm -hmm. point. Yeah. And um, you realize she is no longer by your side. Oh? Oh? And looking around the room, she is actually just kind of like moved to like a, to the wall as far from the abbot as she could possibly get. And like her eyes are just like saucers. Okay. Um, you'll excuse me. And she was going to walk over to Maybell and like grab her hand and kind of stand in front of her without like, I'm in front of this person. Just like... <laughs> Yeah. Um, you, you know, like, have you ever seen a cat just kind of like stare off into the ether like it's seeing yeah. a ghost? Yeah. 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 That's, that's kind of the way that Maybelle is looking at the abbot. Yeah. And like almost like you can you can feel the hairs on her arms standing up. Yeah. Are you all right? That is a very powerful creature. Creature? Celestial. Oh, oh, can he see you? Almost certainly. Right. <laughs> Maybell, uh, or I'm sorry, Silmi does then step in front of Maybell as if to shield her. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the abbot really is 
paying her no mind. He's just, yes. like, conversing very civilly with the, the rest of the people in the room. Um, excuse me, Abbott. Um, I have, I, I'm Kefiris. I'm, I'm glad to see another member of the Devout, uh, as always. I did have a brief question for you. Have you ever seen this before? And he kind of motions to himself. Uh, he, <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, just gesture to all of you. Yeah, just, like, pull hair aside, horn coming out, and other growths, like, gecko hands. Like, have you ever seen anything like this before? Oh, that's very interesting. It started when we came to this place about six days ago. Um, have you ever seen anything like it on other travelers? On other travelers, no. But I have seen something similar. Oh? Yes. Um, um, I, I can show you if you like. Please, I would be more... However, I, I do have work I need to complete. Yes. Well, while the abbot's distracted, mm -hmm. I talked, I whispered to Arabelle to mm -hmm. be like, go excuse yourself, get uh, get the, the um, Maybelle out of here, make an excuse, go with her. With a word, this man could destroy her. Gotcha. Um, and she stands up, and as she does so, uh, her cards just fall out of her pocket and, like, scatter across the floor. And she's like, shit. Um, I have to use the bathroom. Uh, and then she <laughs> just rushes over to Maybelle and grabs her. She's like, you should come too. <laughs> just drags her out of the room, and Maybelle does not put up a fight. And I'll try to catch Silmi's eye, Silmi's eye and be like, <laughs> like, like, let it go. <laughs> Your muted sister. So you, um, sir, that's the burgomaster's name, uh, Dimitri, Mr. Kreskov, um, would you like us to leave? No, I would actually very much like you to be here for this. Is this something you're sure you'd like to go through with? There is a chance, as far as I'm aware, that they could come back not as themselves. The abbot is a very powerful man. I have no doubt that he's going to accomplish something tonight. And if there is even a small chance that I can see my boy again, I'm willing to try it. All right, I just want you to be prepared that there is a chance that he might he, come back. He, he will put a hand on your shoulder, and that is why I want you here. And Stetchin was, like, checking his gear, and it's like, we will take care of it if it goes badly. <clears throat> Bartholomew, like, has been picking up Arabelle's cards, and he, like, makes eye contact with Dimitri and nods. Um, Airbell's cards have fallen in kind of a strange way. Uh, give me a perception check. <laughs> Ooh. I play perceptive boys. Uh, 18. 18? Yeah. All right. Uh, three cards in particular fell face up, and the rest of them all fa fell face down. 
which three? <laughs> I'll, I'll let you know later. Okay. I, I actually have to check my notes and I don't have them immediately in front of me for this in particular. Mental note. Mental note. We'll come back to that. Um, <clears throat> the Burgomaster will walk back to a back room um, and open the door. And he will just kind of stand there for a moment, um, not wanting to really look at what's inside. And then he will just gesture to the rest of the group and say, in here. We follow. Is this a <clears throat> death parlor? It is a small boy's room and there is a child lying in the bed. How old is the boy? Was the boy? About five. Um, he is very young. Uh, he's got kind of a sallow face. Uh, he has dark skin and curly hair um, and just kind of knobbly, uh, spindly limbs. And uh, the abbot will enter the room and just sort of stand at the foot of the bed. And he will stand there briefly for a moment, just kind of regarding the body of the child. Um, and just kind of hold his hands up to his lips briefly, as though, like, thinking very hard. And then he's going to look up at Steshen and say, You are a medium, are you not? Uh, yes, I am. A spirit cannot be returned to its body if it is unwilling. And... I sense that this child is frightened. <laughs> he should be. Death in Barovia can be a harrowing experience. Would you be willing to reach out to him and give him some comfort? Of course. And at that moment, Stetchin looks around. Are, are his spirits near this guy? Your spirits are oddly quiet around him. They're here, mm -hmm. but they're just kind of standing and watching and listening. Hmm. Okay. Uh, all right. I will do so. And uh, yep, uh, I'll, I'll reach out for the boy. All right. Um, you reach out. Um, just kind of sifting through the ether, um, searching for this child. And you get a, a, a weak sense um, of someone who was rather timid in life, someone who had not necessarily a lot of friends, um, uh, not, a, not a very social person. Um, and it seems like having this many people around is a little, that he's getting some stage fright. And, and, and I can feel him, but I can't see him yet. Correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Oh. It's, it's okay, little one. It's, uh, family and, um, protect us be uh, here to help all right um you hear a, a slight bumping coming from the corner of the room and looking over you can see that there's a toy chest hmm. that makes sense and i'll uh, i'll take a couple steps towards it mm -hmm. and uh I, I still can't see him, though. I can just feel that he's there. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, 
Are you hiding from me? You don't have to. Later on, I'll introduce you to Arabelle. She's quite fun. <laughs> and I'll open the I'll open the toy chest. All right. Um, you can see that there is a spectral uh, approximation of the child lying in the bed, and he's just kind of wrapped around a teddy bear and looking up at you with these enormous eyes. And uh, Stetchin, you know, there's tears starting to form on his, you know, in his eyes, and uh, he'll he'll pick up the the teddy bear and be like, "This uh, there's people who need to see you. Um, may I?" And I I try to lift the bear. Does um, it come with it, or he he will actually just give the bear to you. Okay. Um, and then just sort of nod okay. quietly. And uh, I'll walk with the bear rather revelant, revel, revelantly. Reven, yeah, that's the word I want. Not revenant. <laughs> not revenant uh, um, Reverent. Yes, thank you. And uh, I'll walk with the bear and I'll lay the bear on the boy and put the hands of the, of the boy on the bear and uh and i'll uh i'll look at the abbot and then i'll 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 eyeball the toy chest yep the the boy is gone from the toy chest it was left open but he's no longer there okay uh and the abbot will just kind of smile peacefully to himself and say ah that's what was missing um and he's going to walk around to the other side of the bed um, and just kind of touch the boy and say, wake up. And the boy's eyes open. I would like to make an arcana check about what the fuck just <laughs> happened. Go for it. And a religion of the same order, please. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping for a religion on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Go I for it, everybody. That's not that. how magic works. <laughs> Don't you... Bart leans over to Irene and goes... You know, this isn't the weirdest shit we've seen. I got a natural one, so a seven. One. All right. There's some sort of trick going on here. That's not how magic works. That's not how magic works. Might be how supposed religious to be. Magic there's works. incantations. There's yeah. spells. There's components. Lights. There's lights that shine out and stuff. Might there's be how uh, divine magic works. Presentation. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I don't know. Modified 20. Modified 20? Yes, with a religion check. All right, um, Kefris, you know that some divine magic is big and loud and like, you know, puts on a show, but there is other divine magic that is quiet and basically just a tap on the shoulder. The Lord works in mysterious ways, sister. And I'll just kind of pat her on the shoulder. <laughs> but he didn't have to, he didn't even have to, there were no components. He didn't have to say any magic words. Do you know how long I had to study and learn the arcana? I mean, that language is so difficult. Well, it was your decision to not end up going into the clergy and learn all of your magic from books instead. That was not my decision. You know that was mom's decision, all right? <laughs> and as Silmi is like losing her mind over this right now, um, the Burgomaster is having a tearful reunion with his son. Um, <laughs> He's just, he's just crouched over the bed and hugging <clears throat> the boy. Um, and he's just, Ilya, I thought I'd never see you again. Um, um, and the boy just kind of wraps his arms around his dad's neck. And um, you see his eyes light up. You see him begin to smile. Um, there is the, the flush of life in his cheeks. And you can tell that whatever illness that had beset him before is gone. And he just begins to laugh. And Stetchin, like, you know, wipes away the, the tears he had started, and then he says, oh, little one, you have made it. And then he touches his foot and senses for undead, <laughs> celestial, fey, <laughs> the whole gambit. Uh, the boy is not undead. Okay. Or celestial or fey. He is none, a, none of the above? He is a normal, mundane little boy. Um, and the Burgermaster picks him up and spins him, and the two of them laugh together. 
I'm just gonna usher everyone out so they can have this moment. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and as you do so, you notice that the abbot has begun to walk out of the room and out of the building, just kind of without saying goodbye. Wait, wait, no, hold up, hold up. <laughs> Kefris is like immediately following <clears throat> this abbot. Wait, so, okay, um, you said that you had seen something similar to this? <laughs> it was incredible what you've done. Honestly, this, this town is wonderful. Compared to everywhere else that we've been, and and you are a big reason for that. Thank you. And I know you're going to say it's a thankless job, but <laughs> thanks are deserved. And so they are freely given. They are received. Stetchin pulls a cloth from nowhere. <laughs> um, and... <clears throat> He, his eyes will actually kind of trail over to Silmi and um, he's going to like lean down to her a little bit conspiratorially um, he's going to uh, kind of tap his ring finger and say congratulations oh thank you um, doesn't seem the time but thank you sorry I'm a bit of a hopeless romantic <laughs> Yeah. It was very uh, exciting what you just did. I, I, I would love to learn that sort of thing if you're willing to teach. Well, yes, perhaps I could teach you something. That would be incredible. Um, and as he says that, you hear um, a haunting sound of a bell kind of keening over the village and um you, you recognize it like it, it that bell has been going off at kind of at odd hours throughout the day um and he just kind of straightens and says i need to return to the abbey i have patients that i must see of course could you use any help my brother is very um, tomorrow in... then i can come by when you're less busy kefris it's i'm sh that probably took a lot out of him there's still people he needs to take care of, sister, so... Perhaps you can help him. Yes. Please let me help. Please, please. There is always work to be done at the Abbey. Oh, thank God. Yes, uh, of course. I accept. Wonderful. And I don't really have many things, so I am just ready to go with him whenever. And that bell can, uh, begins to ring again. He's all like, I really must be going. I, and he off turns we around. And begin, you're you're going to follow him? Yeah! Can I help? <laughs> you meant right now. I, I, well, if, if not right now, I, again, I can come by first thing tomorrow morning uh, when the sun's still down and, and, and help. I, I am trained in some form or fashion so if you need an extra set of hands <laughs> he, he just kind of smiles to himself even the most powerful of holy men need to sleep that's true like i said i'll, I'll i can come by first thing tomorrow morning sorry right. for taking your time i'll be expecting you and Kefra's just like, yes, finally, <laughs> somebody who makes sense in this place. Uh, and, and this guy just kind of, he, he exudes this aura of peace. Um, he's like, I don't know, man. He's like, he, he's like a freaking model. He's just perfect. And he flashes that winning smile and he leaves it. And he leaves, he just goes... And that bell just continues. Thank to you. And what a nice man. As he walks out the door, I hand the the moon silvered blade rapier of mine to Speedy, mm -hmm. and I say, if the boy turns, he is striking through the hearts with this, and and I follow the abbot. <laughs> Speedy takes it and nods his head. <laughs> nice. All right. You're following the abbot. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are, are you being stealthy about this? Or? No, 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 no. I walk 
up and attempt to match his pace, uh, right. even if I have to run. Okay. Um, he, he's just walking at a comfortable speed. Um, okay. And uh, like you can, you can see uh, like windows opening and like people kind of peeking out. You can hear whispers throughout the village, the abbot, the abbot. <laughs> um, and um, you match pace with him and the abbot looks at you and says, I believe you need to sleep as well. I shall sleep. I shall sleep. But first, I've heard rumors that the, the hermit visits you. Mm, yes, the, the hermit does visit me from time to time. Mm. We uh, exchange gossip about what's going on throughout the land. And you freely exchange with him? Information, yes. Hmm. So, what is your thoughts on the hermit? My thoughts on the hermit? Hmm. I think he needs to get out more. <laughs> yes, I, I do believe that is <laughs> that would do him very good. Uh, Use a few more friends. His his um, disdain for the Vestani is uh, troubling to me. Oh, that's news to me. Hmm. <laughs> Obviously, he does not tell you everything. Evidently not. I'll have to speak with him on that. When was the last time he saw you? If you do not mind my asking. The last time I saw the hermit? Hmm. Oh, it has to have been months. Just kind of like scratches his naked chin. Hmm. Okay. I if uh, Kefra's wishes and it is okay with you, I will lend my skills tomorrow if the boy is okay. <laughs> That's fair. A thank you. And I step back and turn on a heel and head oh, back was, to the house. And it was good to meet you, Mr. Mr. Stetchen van Antiel. Stetchen and again, Antiel. tips his hat and you begins marching back. Very good with the spirits, Mr. Hmm. Von Antiel. <laughs> Say yes. <laughs> and he laughs to himself and then uh, continues. All right, uh, the two men part ways. Meanwhile, <clears throat> back in the house. Uh, as Bartholomew is like peeking his head in to make sure like everything is okay. If Silmir Kefris is next to him, he just says, I would like to go back to Vallaki if time permits. Yes, I would as well. What, like tonight? No. Whenever we get the chance. With the death of the Burgomaster, there is definitely a shift in power. And mm. I hope my family is safe. And Leo, he I sent him a note, and if he hasn't gotten back to me in two days, I told him I'd come for him. All right. Um, then we'll, we'll go to Vallaki. It's only a few hours away from here. Um, Irina, do you feel comfortable here? A little too comfortable. That's what I was afraid of. Cuz, if you start feeling too comfortable, there's a thing called a false sense of security. Should, would you want to come with us? Brother, I don't think that's... No offense, Irina, but I don't think that's a good idea. She is safe here, especially with that man is here. Is she? Did you feel his divine power? I mean... I did. He's probably the reason that Strahd isn't here already. Or... 
This town seems like it has a very stringent no outsiders policy unless you can you provide think, a very special service do you really think that strahd would adhere to this no entry policy no but i'm saying there might not have been a reason for her to actually want to come here otherwise if we are lucky strahd does not even know i'm here It's entirely up to you as to what happens, but those are my stakes in it. Uh, Irina's going to take your hand and say, please, do not get my hopes up. I feel very safe here. Okay. And I hate it. We're meant to suffer, after all. Do not tempt me to leave. All right. So. So. Two days. Then we go for Velaki. If. No, no, I sent the letter. Um. Yesterday. It this been, morning. It would have been. Oh. Yeah, this morning. I sent. I sent it this morning. So. Hopefully I'll hear back. So not tomorrow. If I don't hear from him tomorrow, then we'll go the next day. All right. Um, but if Speedy would like to go sooner, I'm definitely okay with that. He nods his head. We do owe it to him. To Speedy. Yeah, oh, we do. Bartholomew. Who? <laughs> Kepper's just kind of has like a shitty grin on his face. <laughs> uh, all right, so yes, we'll head back to Velaki and make right. sure that everything's well, tip-top shape for Barovia. So mostly crumbling, but still together. Oh, um, where's Maybell? Hide, hidden away in a back room with uh, Arabelle. <laughs> I'm gonna go try and find her. As Silmi leaves, uh, Bartholomew leans over to Kefris and goes, if she freaks over that sort of thing, wait till she, she learns about sorcerers. <laughs> <laughs> There are these fellows called bards. Absolutely ridiculous. It's almost as if their sex drive is powering their magic, and I despise it. I think my cousin dated the bard once. Um, when you find uh, Maybell and Arabelle, they're arguing over the validity of palm reading. I'm gonna sit in on this for a second. <laughs> Don't tempt me, Wings. <laughs> Um, well, Maybell argues that there is some validity to palm reading because you can uh, you can tell whether or not somebody's a hard worker or not. Um, whereas Arabelle's all like, no, the whole thing's bullshit. It's something that we made up to get people's money. Like, you're being taken in. And Maybell keeps on trying to explain, but, but no, cold reading is a thing. And Arabelle's all like, no. Maybell. Let the... All right, all right, children, children. <laughs> Come now. The man is gone. Um, I think we have something to uh, tell my brother. What are we telling him now? She points to her hand. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no secrets, remember? No, no secrets. Of course not, no. <laughs> Um, and, uh, we'll, uh, go rejoin the, the group. All right. Um, Kefris, Speedy, there's something I would like to tell you. Kefris, like, braces himself <laughs> a little bit, just, oh, gods. <laughs> um, Mabel and I are engaged. 
as of this afternoon. Congratulations. You said, okay. What? Congratulations. Oh, okay. Uh, Sorry, I was just, I was holding my breath there for a second and then, then I remembered no, I don't no, need to breathe. No, no, it, <laughs> no, it's, for, it's, it's just kind of like, I always thought you two were together and then at one point I said, I'm pretty sure you're together and you said, no, we're not. But then later it was, yes, we totally have been. Don't worry uh, about I it. Technically, you did not say that we weren't together. I just told you that we did, that I knew how to do magic as a distraction. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> yep. But. Oh, come here. And he just <laughs> goes over and brings Silmi into a big hug. <laughs> Uh, and he will he will try and wrap his arm around Maybell as well and bring her into a hug. Very stiff, very cold, accepting. Yep, like death, <laughs> like death. I just figured <laughs> she's like Kefris, Kefris, Kefris. Come now, come on. I'm. If you need anybody to officiate the wedding. You know somebody who failed out of priest school, so... <laughs> of course, of course. But then who would be my... my man of honor? Speedy. Speedy? <laughs> if you would have me, I would be most honored. <laughs> then he'd like... <laughs> <laughs> I, well, it's, you know, I, I just thought since, you know... It was, it was time. What am I, a job deliver? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. We'll definitely need more bridesmaids. I'm kidding. You barely know me. <laughs> <laughs> I was being polite. <laughs> I, mean, I do have a plus one if that's how you nobles do things. Oh my gosh, it's going to be such a celebration once we tell mother. Um. <laughs> Sorry. Right. One we step don't at have time. to. We don't have to tell her. <laughs> well, I think spending all that money on a wedding is going to. I mean. It's not the wedding she wanted, but that's fine. I don't know. I we'll feel like. We'll have our own wedding. <laughs> that's true. With Barovians right. and Ravens. Oh. I hand Arabelle the cards and I ask her, uh, do these three cards mean anything to you? Uh, Arabelle takes the cards and kind of looks at them and flips through them. She's like, they don't seem related, except for these two. Uh, she shows you one um, and she says, uh, this is the healer. It's kind of self-explanatory. Yes. Um, she shows you another one. Missionary. Um, this one's I'm sorry, the what? Missionary. The card, not the... The person, not the position. Oh! <laughs> Ke Kepris just side-eyes his sister. <laughs> Silmi's like, found a spot on the ground and she's just staring at it for a second. I'm so sorry, I just... <laughs> I'm seven. But continue, the, continue, please, please. The way it denotes people who spread wisdom and faith to other people, warnings and stuff. Um, she's like tax collector. What's that one mean? I mean, besides the obvious tax collector. Corruption. What? I don't like that at all. <laughs> Well, I mean, corruption or honesty in an otherwise corrupt government. Oh. These things kind of go both ways. She, like, shovels, shuffles them back into her deck. Well. And Kefris kind of leans in. Do we want to stay here, then? I think that would be appropriate and a good idea as he far as... He extended an offer to us, and I would feel really bad about not following through on that after we've 
Yes. We right. still have dinner on the table. This is true. And uh, if the boy does turn at some point. All right. So I'll be on the lookout. If anything taxman ish happens here, be on the lookout. Right. I suppose I really. It's not my forte. I. He brought on me pats Kefris on the shoulder. I, I'll keep a lookout as well. All right. And of course, I'll be keeping a lookout. Yes, she doesn't sleep. Nope. That's why she gets so much done in night. <laughs> Thank you, Raging Michigander, for the follow of dollars. We donate to the tiny organizations in or tiny changes organization in your name. GB, do you want to do the thing? <gasps> yes. It's oh. been so long. <clears throat> the do best you, part. Do the, thing. the best part is I know Raging Michigander. So thanks, bud. Yay! Thank you for helping. Uh, when someone follows or uh, subscribes or whatnot, and I'm on the channel. We take this mallet, we hit that guy in the face for you. Dung. It's been so long. <sighs> Thanks, buddy. As it turns out, this building has a lot of empty beds. Um, mostly child-sized. Uh, <laughs> that being said, um, everyone can get their own bed tonight. Uh, uh, sorry, Bartholomew's gonna get by the kids' room and just sink down next to the threshold. Mm -hmm. Rapier, like, propped up against his shoulder. Great. Okay, so you're just gonna sleep right outside the boys' room? Mm-hmm. Um, the Burgermaster talks with his son late into the night, um, and you can hear the boy laughing throughout the conversation. Um, and eventually, the Burgermaster will leave and go to his own room to sleep. And when I got back, I, I basically saw you there, sat down next to you, <laughs> and just like, yes, if we could take watch. Bartholomew passes you a wine flask. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Um, meanwhile, Silmi, you're going to be heading to bed as well? Of course. Uh, after Maybell puts my hair in uh, rags so that it curls the next day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Kefris? Uh, I'm going to be updating my notebook with mm -hmm. all of the latest developments that have been happening on my bod, as well as including a little note uh, about how the abbot might be able to help, which would be really cool. Uh, Seems like a pretty cool dude. And then I am going to take the rope that I have I'm going to tie one end of it to the bed. I'm mm -hmm. going to tie another end to my free arm. Uh, mm -hmm. So that way there is no night walk. Uh, there's no sleepwalking tonight. Or if there is, that I have to drag a fucking bed with me. So hopefully it would raise some alarms. All right. Cool. I like it. Um, I would like to get some perception checks from Session and Bartholomew. Oh, why would you do this? They're having a happy moment. Um, I'm gonna have Maybell sit outside of Kefris's room or in his room if that's not too much. Oh, absolutely. For the night. Um, if Kefris doesn't mind, uh, Maybell will come in with a cup of tea for him, um, and then, like, kind of settle in on a chair in the corner, staring at him. From from the shadows, she's probably knitting or something. You know, that's even worse. Just suddenly, With an owl face. At <laughs> uh, twenty one, twenty dirty, dirty twenty. <clears throat> nice, nice. Um, Silmi, go ahead and roll me a d twenty for Maybell. Okay, and add a three to that for perception. Fourteen, girl. 14. All right. Cool. I like it. Good. Wonderful. Great. All That's right. My baby. Um, Kefris, 
you see a crypt um a crypt that you haven't seen in six days and in that crypt there is a small boy holding a really ratty looking doll um, and he's just kind of sitting up on a sarcophagus just kind of playing around with the doll um, and he looks up and it's Thornbolt um, the little ghost boy that you met back in the death house yeah. and um, he just kind of looks directly into your eyes and says we're still here it's still where in, in this place or Barovia as a whole or, or where is here um, and Rosvalda will appear next to him, and um, the specter of the nursemaid will also appear, um, and she's holding a bundle. And um, they all just look at you, and in unison they say, we're still here. And then you wake up. Uh... Maybell isn't in the room. Uh... uh... All right. Um, I'm, I'm going to assume that she just let herself out. Um, her and Silmi just got engaged. It would make sense that they would want to spend the evening together. Um, is it? Does it look like morning outside? No, nope, it's dark. Um, though there seems to be a, an orange flickering light coming from the hallway. I am going to untie myself and see what's making the light. All right. Um, you come creeping out of your bed, um, make your way into the hallway, um, and the the house just kind of seems dark and, and empty, except for um, a single flickering candle that's sitting on the dining room table. And you can see Steshin is sitting awake um, with his hat down over his face. Um, and you can't really see his eyes, but you can see his glasses reflecting the light off of the candle. Um, Pretty common and for off Steshin. In, off in the corner, um, Maybell is just, or not Maybell, Arabelle is, I knew this would be a problem. Arabelle is just flipping through her deck of cards. Well, um... Steshin, have you seen Silmi or Speedy or or anybody? What are you doing out there? We'll just he he'll kind of creep closer to Steshin. Uh, no, I have not seen them. I think they are asleep. Uh, oh, um. Uh, all right. Uh, do you? Do you, do you know why you do not remember your rages? Well, I'm assuming that whatever it is that comes out when it happens, uh, that's when he takes control. <laughs> that would be my guess. Anyways, it's not academic in the least, but it's all that I really have. It's the same reason the boy doesn't remember what happened while he was dead. Are you saying I'm dying? Mm, no. There are some things that are so horrible. Our minds would not... Uh, would they, they will block, block them out. Protect us from the truth. Uh, you... Uh. You keep trying to separate yourself from the memory, to believe that you and the beast uh, are not the same. But sooner or later, <laughs> you'll have to face the truth. That's what, uh, that's what Silmi was saying. <laughs> uh, was that, at least in, in a lycanthrope sort of way, uh, the more that you try and fight back against the the inner beast, the stronger it's going to get until eventually it comes out on its own because it doesn't like being caged. 
And Good. I did tell her that uh, she said that we were going to work on it today. And we all went to sleep. Yeah, you know, things happen. It was a big day. I did tell her that should I see the monster again, I would uh, well, I'd sit down and try and have cheese sandwiches with it or something, I suppose. Your sister is wise. You should listen to her. You don't have any siblings, do you? <laughs> and he looks around... <laughs> I have plenty of family. Hmm. Right. Um. Sorry about that. Uh. When he says that, um, he he looks around at um these invisible people that you never really see, um, except this time you do see them. You see, um a man appear next to session. You see a woman appear next to session. You see children, you see old and young alike. Um, an entire village just kind of balloons out from him and fills the room. Um, and as you just kind of watch all of these people appear, among them is a, a pair of eyes that gleam out from the crowd. I'll, I'll look over towards the eyes uh, they are shining and predatory um, and they begin to rise up out of the people um, and you see the hulking form of the beast uh, begin to approach um, and he just kind of reaches a hand out and covers your face with his entire enormous limb and what follows is a cacophony of sensation. Your belly rumbles as you approach Doru's body, mouth watering in anticipation of sinking your teeth into a fresh kill. You hear bones twisting and snapping as you throw a hag's body under the grindstone. You feel claws sink into your cat. Uh, you feel your claws sink into the calf of the grave digger as you interrogate him for the location of St. Andrew's bones. Behind you, Sylvie's eyes widen in terror. Grief turns into mind-numbing rage as you smash your way through the abandoned house, filled with the certainty that you have nothing left but the destruction that you wreak with your own two hands. Blood spatters your skin as your maul finds purchase in body after body, rending flesh, popping tendons, gnashing bones. You see death after death and witness an overwhelming symphony of violence and suffering, all of your own doing. And that's when you wake up. Only something is wrong. You're already standing at the foot of a bed, looking down. You see your own shadow laid out in front of you. And it's like you're just a passenger in your own body as you see your clawed hand reach up and reach toward your sister. Silmi? Yeah. A hand touches you while you sleep. Miss Silmi? Yes? What? Miss, what? Wake up. What? I, I don't think... I think something's wrong. With what? 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 With whom? It, it's Kefris. Oh. Uh, and she uh, gets up out of bed. What's wrong? What, uh, take me. Um, she just kind of titters out of the room on tiptoes, trying not to uh, up upset anyone. And she's explaining to you as she goes, he's, he's just, he hasn't been moving. Is that a problem? I, he, he usually... Listen, I, I watch you two sleep sometimes. And, um... It's not weird. She doesn't sleep. It's not weird. <laughs> I just, I want to make sure that you're okay. And No, I don't understand. He's not 
moving like he usually does. He 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 usually he'll sleep on one side and then he'll flip over and turn onto the other. And he just he does this weird sighing thing. And he just oh my he gosh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Exactly, exactly. And he just he hasn't been doing any of that. And he's just he's been too quiet. All right. Well, um, yes. And she like puts out a robe as she's leaving and uh makes her way to Kefris's room. All right, uh Kefris, roll me in a tackle. Oh boy. That is oh fuck. That's a 27. 27. Awesome. There's a crunching noise um from Kefris's room and um just a, a enormous commotion. Everybody in the house can hear this. Um as a humanoid uh body comes tearing out of Kefris's room and just runs along the wall and busts through the back door and <gasps> goes sprinting out across the lawn. Uh, I book it after him. All right. Wake uh, Speedy! That's oh, he's right. already up and running. Uh. Yep, okay. So uh, <laughs> everybody starts sprinting after Kefris. Um, Kefris, you awake to the feeling of dirt and mud and uh, just like you're, you're looking up and you like it, it's dark, but like there's there's a, a, a bright there's a, a bright light of a, a night sky above you, um, and and dirt is just falling down on top of you. Okay, okay, okay. Third time's a charm. Cheese sandwiches. Cheese sandwiches. <laughs> Focus on that. We'll be fine. Um, um. Um, the rest of the group, you hear this, uh, this panicked voice coming from a hole in the ground in the backyard. I'm gonna misty step towards that spot. Um, Kefris is at the bottom of the grave that was dug for, um, the Burgomaster's son. Kefris? Yeah? All right, that is quite enough of that. Get out of the hole. We're going to do this. I tried, right? I tried the cheese sandwiches thing. It didn't nope. work. Nope, nope, nope. You didn't invite the beast in. He found his way out at night. Get out of the hole. <laughs> Get out of the hole. <laughs> didn't check it. Yeah, I crawl, crawl, crawl. Uh, Steven. Yes. 10 off of your maximum HP. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Somebody's gonna like square him up. All right. Let the beast out. We are in a safe space. Speedy's here, Maybell's here. Do it. I, hey, listen, you I don't think I can. I don't, don't mm. You get behind Speedy. No. Yes. I will not. You will not attack me. Please. I very rarely ask you for anything, sister. Please. Just this once. Compromise. Uh, Maybell will stand in front of Silmi. Behind someone is better than behind no one. All right. All right, just clear your mind. Don't fight it. Embrace the beast. Invite him out. Put cheese sandwiches or whatever. Just invite him, all right? Tommy pulls out his silver dagger. Estetchen's already hand crossbow <laughs> and 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 silver moon sword out and ready. Uh, gods, okay. Um. All right. It's very hard with everybody watching, but all right. Um. And he is going to take off his Ilmateri cord. And then he is just going to steadily begin tying it 
And as he does, he is just going to be praying to himself because he has no idea how to drown out the presence of everyone else staring at him, asking him to clear his mind. He is just mantra at this point, just trying to get into his his forms if he can. Mm-hmm. As you do this, um, just before you get to the community knot, uh, Irina comes up behind you um, and stops you and begins tying it for you. Thank you. You know, you said in a dream that it was actually better, so he was hoping it's for the best. She um, looks a little confused. She just gives you a reassuring squeeze on the shoulder. We're all here. You want us to turn around? No, because apparently this... Apparently I, if we are one and the same, do not have stage fright. This kind of thing. So... And he will close his eyes, and he is going to try and focus on something that he's been thinking about that has been making him very, like, undercurrent angry, but one of those that he hasn't really let himself feel because he's been trying to to be a positive force for this. Um, he's going to think about Strahd. And he is going to start thinking about all of the people in Barovia and about how much they are without when Strahd lives in a castle. Think about how Strahd has confined these people to the point where there are more there are more bodies than souls and how not even the dead can get a proper rest and he's going to think about the communal suffering of the people of this land as best he can because that to him is inexcusable and he will try and rage all right um, for a moment, Kefris is, uh, he, he seems lost to whatever thoughts he is having. Um, and he is, his breathing is even and calm. And that breathing gradually gets more and more ragged. Um, his form begins to swell. Um, the horn on his head uh, just juts out in a in a violent action, just like instantly becomes larger. It's like he, uh, it's like he just popped a bunch of quills out of his head and skull and body, um, and he is infuriated. Hello. You seem to be part of my brother. You don't like being kept away, do you? You don't like it when he fights you. He's letting you out now. Kefris, are you still in there? You can hear her. I will try my best to respond. And if I can't seem to form any kind of vocality with it, I will see if I can at least raise my hand or blink or something. Okay. I think you can vocalize. You vocalized about your displeasure with Electrum in the past whilst raging. I think that you can vocalize this. Yes. <laughs> See? What did I tell you? But you have been doing magic behind my back for years. 
Yes. But that doesn't mean you don't love me anymore. That doesn't mean you want to hurt me. I will protect you. With yes, everything you I have. But you don't need to. You can. But you know that I'm perfectly capable on my own. And now since um roughly i don't know six seconds has passed and oh, yeah. you have not attacked anything and you have not been attacked uh your rage begins to dissipate um, <laughs> quick somebody punch him we gotta keep him around i was um, going to say if if i could feel the rage dissipating i i would attack myself like i did back in the death house all right also is he fey fiend celestial down the list um, you're feeling some celestial okay. coming off of him. It's not as powerful as the abbot, for sure. Right, right, right. but uh, he, I stetch and chuckles to himself a little bit uh, as he reaches out and he feels it. He, oh, how pleasant. Yep. Um, and like as Kefris is conversing with Silmi, you can see him starting to, uh, his rage beginning to dissipate and um, his claw comes up and just jabs into his shoulder and uh, Maybelle jumps, just like, Ooh! It's okay, <clears throat> Kefris, it's okay. You can come back now. I'll let you out. He's not going to fight you anymore. You're part of him and I think he understands that now. What do I look like? <clears throat> you look like my brother with a stupid horn coming out of your head. You're a Kefricorn. <laughs> By the way, that was very clever. There, I would like to believe that there is just like Kefris's kind of shit-eating grin forms, but the teeth are all just jagged and sharp making up the grin. Mm -hmm. You can come back now. And then I will just try and and focus back. Yep. Uh, his breathing becomes less ragged. It becomes more even. Um, and Kefris deflates back into your brother, if a little scalier, a little spikier. <clears throat> Do you remember what happened? This time... What did I call you? You called me a Kefricorn. <laughs> honestly, I for that... one think the horn's quite fetching. <laughs> Just look over at Maybelle. Uh... <laughs> she, she's kind of self-consciously holding her hand over her horn. <laughs> I will say it is a much more apt nickname than what we've previously had for me, so I will take it with what I can get. Well, hopefully this will be the last of your episodes and you can get some actual sleep, as can the rest of us. If I miss out on another night's sleep, I know a very refreshing spa in town. Are you ready for bed, Kefris? Very much so. It has been so many days. <laughs> Bartholomew like squints at the sky looking for like the time. It's too early for this. And he walks back <laughs> to the house to make sure the Burgomaster and the kid are okay. That's amazing. Um, Definitely yes. going to grab, if there's any food that's been left on the table, I'm totally grabbing some. Raging always makes me hungry. Oh, uh, absolutely. Just ask Speedy, he'll cook you something. Uh, Kefris, do you want to maybe share a bed? Like we were, did when we were children? I think that would be for the best. Or at least the same room. As long as you don't elbow me in the face, I think we'll be all right. No promises. However, 
they are getting a little bit pointier, so I will I will try most heartedly not to. As dashing as you would look with an eye patch, I don't think that it would whole, really suit your whole aesthetic. Right. <laughs> she kind of like punches him weakly on the shoulder because she's not that strong. Irina's got her head down um, and her shoulders are kind of shaking. Um, and like for, for a worrying moment, it, it looks like she's crying. Uh, and then she just throws back her head and she's like, Capricorn! <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said, it's clever. <laughs> All right, everyone, let's come on back to the house. All right. I'll put a hand on Kefris's shoulders as we're walking away, and I'll say, Bonsamaro, I will uh, speak to you a little more. Hmm. Please? When we walk to the abbot. Uh, yes, of course. Thank you. Thank you as always, Stetchin. Hmm. You've proven to be a true friend. I try. Stetchin. Hmm. Give me a perception check. Ooh. Six. All right. All right. So, um, the night passes, um, and Kefris the nightmare picks up right where you left off. Oh, goody. <laughs> I... Um, as you were. And at some point during the night, you wake up having torn into your sister. Not in real life, in the dream. Okay, good. <laughs> and I think we're going to go on break. Hooray! Thank you <laughs> to Daddy Warbucks for the raid. Thank you to everybody Yay! who's decided to stop by and join us Thanks, so far. Uh, we are going to try and be back in five to ten minutes, so don't go no place unless it is to grab a food, grab a drink, grab a friend, somebody that you're close to, and give them a, give them a big <laughs> squeeze. Uh, or possibly go to bit.ly slash adventure merch, pick yourself up something nice. Uh, but we are going to try and be back shortly, so don't go no place. All right, everybody. Bye-bye! Hello, everybody, and welcome back. RJ is gone. For right now but he'll be back uh so we we have gotten a long rest except for kephras and feeling good about today right D do we is it how good do we feel about today not really i'm very tired and i st and even after the whole like oh yeah i finally got control of my rages i still had a dream where i ate my sister so <laughs> I, I think that you do jerk awake at some point during the night um, and like you see Silmi's okay um, and uh, Maybell is actually watching from the corner and she just kind of looks at you and like gives you a concerned eye. Uh, I accidentally kicked my own leg. Deception? Have you ever tripped in your sleep? This feels familiar. Have we been in this literal exact same situation before? No, but Kefris has never really lied to anybody. Getting some real deja vu. Uh, that is an 18. 18. Ho ho. 19. Fuck. Just barely. Um, she... She just kind of gives you like a, like a look like I'm not buying it. She's asleep. I can tell you outside. I just don't, I don't want to wake her. Okay. Uh, she'll stand up and walk out. <laughs> I lock the door. Ha, fuck you. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I'll, I'll, I'll exit with her. Um, and uh, just very quietly shut the door behind uh, and say, um, so when this first started happening, 
and and not the, the sticky hands because the first time I, I I slept really since this began happening one of the things that I had to dream of the first thing was that big in me was hunched over Sumi and he was eating her. She was dead on the ground and that was before I really knew anything about it. So I figured, hey, why not? Uh, just a nightmare. Don't think about the bad thoughts. And then it happened again earlier this evening when I I dreamt I was in a crypt, and then I woke up, but I actually dreamt that I woke up because I wasn't actually up. Instead, I dreamt that I was talking with Stetchin, but Stetchin was telling me the same thing that Silmi had already told me, and then I started seeing all of Stetchin's family members after I said a joke that I probably shouldn't have said because honestly, it made Stetchin kind of feel bad about it, and really, I should have been thinking on my feet. Anyways, that is besides the point. After that point, what I saw was that the then the big in me decided to manifest itself inside of this large group of spirits, I was very shocked because, well, you know, I thought that I was awake at the time, but instead, big ol' spirity monster comes at me, puts a palm on my head, my vision goes dark, and then I wake up. Or so I think. Then I'm actually standing above Silmi, and I have my hand out extended, and then so I woke sweet. up. Shh, you are so loud! And then he closes his door again and goes back. Can we talk about this outside? Actually, no, the story's almost done. I'll, I'll... So uh, anyways... <laughs> she, she, she stops you, like, she puts your, her hand her hands up in your face. She goes, shh, 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 And she's gonna go, like, open up the door for Steshin. If you're still awake, <laughs> you should probably be a part of this conversation. Okay, now we're all being too loud. Everybody most, calm down. I heard most of it already. <laughs> <laughs> but, Speaking of giving up sleep. He's walking into the kitchen. <laughs> Arabelle walks out. So like he was, he was just beginning to learn. He was just beginning to learn, and now this. She walks by. Silmi is fast asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Grew up in that house where everybody is so loud. Which is used. Look, we're not used to having our rooms necessarily be adjacent to each other. It was like having a small apartment for a room, and then you know. Don't really have to worry about it. So, I I hate those I hate those kinds of dreams when you think that you're still awake and you're not. So then I woke up, legitimately the last time, catching everyone up now. I guess I mm. thought this was going to be a tender matter, but my voice carries. I had a dream, all of that. Then I woke up. And I had dirt on me, and then you were all there. Part of me still thinks I'm going to wake up again, and I'm not exactly excited about the prospect of that. But, as we are, I then return to sleep. He all reaches out and pinches you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ow. Would that, would that continue your rage? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Uh, no, because it does not deal damage. But if it was a pinch for a point of damage, which you have to be a real fucking hard pinch, yeah, I would I would keep raging. Um, but then, when I went back to sleep, I was standing above her again. And then... I did the thing. I, I, I apparently ate my sister. Again. See, that's the part that doesn't make any sense to me. Thank you. You're not like that. Like she, Bartholomew's there. Mm -hmm. She kind of looks over at Bartholomew. Like, am am I wrong here? He, wh whenever he does that, when he becomes that creature, he, he never wants to eat her. He wants to protect her. Uh more often than not, you do rage just to protect your sister. Yes, but you're dealing with the beast, and he is not accepted to beast. 
I what have if? some qualms about that, but that's an issue for another. What As do you... I. Listen, as someone who has spent her entire life being looked at like she was a monster because she has horns, I'm not entirely convinced that whatever he's turning into is a beast. It is not. It is a gift. I keep telling him this. <laughs> now he's arguing with Maybell. He's ignoring, <laughs> ignoring Captain. <Kepler. laughs> I'm not arguing with you. You're agreeing with me. What so, if uh, that good. is what the beast thinks is protecting? If it has kind of bestial brain, it might not be thinking the way that you and I do. Maybe its way of protecting my sister is to put it in the safest pl in the safest place it knows. Okay, it's but tummy. the only place that you have ever wanted to eat your sister, or you know, protect her in that way, is in your dreams. In real life, it has never been like that. All right. Um. And um, she just kind of like grabs his face and like turns it to <laughs> show it to the rest of the people who are present. Look at him. He's thin as a rail. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever's happening to him, I, I feel like it's killing him. I have been getting mighty hungry <laughs> from the beginning. How do you take your eggs? What? How do you take your eggs? Uh, oh, no, you don't. Maybell <laughs> races you to the kitchen. <laughs> and she kind of calls over her shoulder. All I'm saying is, is maybe this isn't related. Do I, would I know that? Player me knows that Barovia, because Strahd is there, kind of perverts certain magical influences. Yeah. 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 Yeah, thanks. Yeah, that makes me feel uncomfortable now. <laughs> um, somewhere. maybe it's somewhere deep inside Castle Ravenloft. A black that. dragon born's nose bleeds today. <laughs> <laughs> so Bartholomew would know that, right? That magical is corrupted by Strahd's influence in Barovia. Yes, of course. That's kind of some. That was something that you had to learn during your blood hunter training. Some magics are because of where we are, because of Strahd's influence. Some magics are perverted. Maybe because you are here in Borovia. This, whatever's happening to you, is a perversion of whatever was supposed to happen. Yeah, well, maybe not supposed to happen, but you are like the third person to have told me that. Is this supposed to happen, or it's a perversion of magic? It's a perversion of magic. Steshin confirmed that he was a blessing, but it's more of a blessing at a cost. First, it is part of your god. Debatable. But... Easy. Maybell is sorry? clinking around quietly in the kitchen. She comes back briefly. Um, she's got an apron tied on now. Oh, Bartholomew's handing her a knife, like sous chef style. Yeah. <laughs> she, uh, the way that she handles a kitchen around you is she basically just tries to fight you for every job you take. Oh no, I that that's like exactly how my mother does things. So it's just like here's a knife, here's some eggs. I'll yeah. be in the corner peeling some potatoes. I'll do the dishes as you cook, so that way there's just a minimal mess at the end. She, she is simultaneously frustrated by you helping, but also impressed that you managed to keep on doing so so helpfully. <laughs> um, but she comes back to Kephris and she says, when did these nightmares start? Well, I'll give you a hint. It didn't happen in the Dale Lands. Started happening once we got here. 
if you're looking for specifics our dungeon master was kind enough to set us up with a timeline so I'm going to reference that uh, but as far as well I've never regularly had dreams of eating someone before have you ever had a night in Barovia where you slept without nightmares I I believe the first night I was here and she like takes out your hand and kind of looks down at the yeah. gecko pads and she's like and this had already started happening yes that's suspicious to me all I know is that I can do without sleep sometimes and so regardless of what happens I'm still going to be the same like if think about it this way I've already been having these nightmares my attitude towards all of you hasn't changed I'm still here for now you and Arabelle let us let us try something mm. let's, uh, oh, are you waiting for eggs or did he get his eggs he looks around <laughs> never <laughs> told me how he wanted them Arabelle already told me so she gets hers first who wants eggs I asked him how he'd take his eggs, and he never responded, so... Oh, is that Kefris? Yeah, I asked him. He just oh, I, anything. I thought he was talking to another one of his ghost friends, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been perfect! Uh, uh, you take your eggs, Mr. Ghostman. <laughs> <laughs> Undead. Sunnyside down. Um, God. I, cold, cold as the grave. Just, um, just, um... However, you make them best. And why don't you you go back to bed, and let's see if a little magic can help you sleep, get you through the night. Wait, so do I eat the eggs or do I go to sleep? I'm very confused. You go to bed, and then the eggs will come to you. You eat eggs, and then we'll put you to sleep. <laughs> All right. I trust you. Okay. Let's just go. All right. You Don't fly. wake your sister, because it'll get loud, and then she won't sleep. So it's here. Go to here. Yeah. Uh, you guys find another bed for for Kefris. Mm -hmm. um, sit him down. Give him some uh, nice, over-easy eggs on toast. You uh, eat that. I'll be right back. And I come back with my monster hunter trunk. <laughs> Take out a mallet. Here's some magic. <laughs> no, uh, and I pull out manacles. And I'm like, oh. if you're worried, you will not go anywhere without the bed this time. And, and he, he goes to put manacles on you. Uh, can you do it around like the, the leg? That way, mm -hmm. if I try and stand up, I'll trip. Mm, sounds great. We see. And so we man manacle him down. And then when you're done with the eggs, Stetchin just like hands the plate away and hopes someone takes it. Mm -hmm. Oh, like, Maybe I'll absolutely there. All right. And then he's like, is I down? And he's like, first, you are now have a full belly. belly. Uh, some, and I assume you had wine or something with it. And he's like, and now you will no longer be exhausted and you will no longer be exhausted i'll cast restoration twice I only have it's only exhausted once yep. oh okay all right and if he looks less gaunt and you know I, I squint and look in his eye and see if he seems exhausted still all right give me a medicine check hmm <laughs> I am going to uh, 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 
take the knowledge of the ancients or whatever it's called. Channel uh, divinity. Yeah. Sounds good. Oh, an 18 and a 19, so 25 or so. Um. Nice. All right. So um, you have become pretty familiar with Kefris and his condition in with your time uh, with him. You can tell that before, yes, he was exhausted. He had the dark circles. He had uh, more baggage than emotional. Um, and you removed that. He's good. Um, but you can tell that he has had some physical wear and tear from his mental stress. Okay. Like he is 100% had some real stress. In fact, um, as you're giving him a once over, you notice that he actually has um, just kind of a shock of gray hair. Hmm. Okay. So is it uh, in my now heightened medical opinion uh can can i use healing magics on him and will it help not um, necessarily to dye his hair but to like the physical do you have access to greater restoration i do not all right um this is beyond your abilities okay all right so then i'm i uh i kind of tuck him in and i'm like are you comfy Yes. <laughs> Do you want me to stand watch tonight? Uh, no, that's fine. Try I don't... to relax. Breathe. Come on. Breathe. Uh, accept. Breathe and accept. And sleep. And I, uh, I hit him with the suggestion spell. Oh, interesting. All right, well, you are casting a spell within five feet of me, so I pull out my maul. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I hate magic. <sighs> uh, but I do have advantage by spells cast that are that close to me. Uh, what save was this? Uh, well, I got to look. The wisdom? It is wisdom. Okay, I got I, an 11, so I don't think... Mm, if no. for any other character, I would say, oh, you can choose to fail this, but honestly, I don't think Kefris would. <laughs> I have the half-elf blood in me, and then I also have Mage Slayer, so it's just like, mm, no magic! <laughs> like, no charms on me! Uh, but yeah, so uh, okay. Kefris will, will take the suggestion and do his best to sleep. S he'll think sleepy thoughts. All right. And after he seems to be asleep, uh, Stetchin will turn to Speedy and say, I have tried. We will see. And he closes his monster box and moves it aside. I think the boy is good for tonight. Hmm. I'm going to get some rest. Mm, says, Me too. That sounds good. And then he waits for Stetchin to like go into his room and just sinks outside of Kefris' room on the door frame. And Stetchin knew you'd do that. That's why he went to bed. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, the night goes on, and Stetchin, at some point, you feel a hand on your shoulder. Mr. Stetchin. You're muted, Mr. Stetchin. <laughs> uh, before, before he looks her in the eyes, he, he reaches for his spectacles. And, uh, yes, yes, what is it? I, I know you've put Kefris down to sleep and everything, but could you come and look at him just for yes. a second? Of course. <laughs> and he grabs his pet, his quill, <laughs> quill and his notebook again. Um, and May Maybell has like se seemingly gone into like you are familiar with this because you have done this yourself quite quite a bit. Um, she has gone kind of into the conspiracy theory mode, <laughs> um, and like the the kind of like nobody believes me, but like I know I'm right. <laughs> we have some red yarn here somewhere. I just 
I just want you to have a look at him. All right, let's just look. All right, um, so you enter the room. Um, it is quiet, too quiet. Um, normally you can hear um, the soft breathing of, you know, and, and see like the rise and fall. But um, Kefris is just stone cold still uh, lying in the bed. Um, and you get this feeling of a presence of, of something that shouldn't be here, something wrong. Hmm. Mm, Fey Fiend Celestial? Undead. <laughs> the bastards. All right. Okay. Is it Maybell? <laughs> <laughs> it is! It is Maybell! But no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, move away, woman. Um, no. <laughs> um, you, you sense something undead in the spiritual sense near Kephris. Uh, not in, but near. Near. Hmm. God. Uh, you have uh, fine twin senses for someone who is a devil and dead. Um, <laughs> He says to Maybell. <laughs> Why? What do you see? I, I can feel the undead nearby. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> you feel something undead. Yes. Um, and she just kind of like <laughs> looks a little nervous. Hmm. <gasps> I have it. Oh, this is beautiful. And uh, I'll cast protection from evil. <laughs> All right. Um, is this something that you do you need to touch him in order to do this? This is a touch spell, yes? Uh, let me double check. I have my spells open. Oh, fuck. It is. The lightest of touch. I use sleight of hand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you reach out and cast protection from evil on Kefris. Mm -hmm. Um and you get a flash of um you you have gotten this before. It's when you have touched corpses and you get a, a flash of what killed them in the end. Um and what you see um, well, first you you hear the crumbling and uh, falling of brick and mortar, um, and you look up and you see a building toppling down on top of you, um, and and you see a windmill drop, and you're gone. You're back. Oh, that was an interesting one. <laughs> and then Kefris breathes deep and does that weird sigh that he does when he sleeps. And Stetchin uh. just shakes. He so badly wants to do a little jig and whoop, but he restrains himself <laughs> so hard. And he's like, oh, I, I got it. This is, you are a genius woman. And uh, I guess, I guess out of sheer, he has to do something with the energy. He gives her a peck on the cheek. And then it's like, and now out, out, out. <laughs> and <laughs> he tries to get out of the room. She's terrified by everything that happened in that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's like, oh, I believe Kefris may sleep. It'll take all my spells every night, but maybe he can sleep. Well, whatever you did, he, he seems to be resting a little easier now. <sighs> and now it is my turn. <laughs> All right. Um, Go to bed. <laughs> I know. Sorry. And I everyone, step over, Speedy. Everyone goes to bed. Morning comes. Kefris, you have finally, finally had a long rest. Yay. My hit point maximum is still fucked. But yay. Sure is. Oh, boy. Um, so, the... Everybody awakens to the sound of 
or to the smell of bacon frying in a pan, mm -hmm. um, eggs, tea, coffee, the whole shebang. And you can hear uh, the burgomaster's son laughing in the kitchen. Uh, is Maybell in my room? Uh, sure. Well, I'm glad that that was sorted out last night. I mean, I, I hope that he slept well. Did he sleep well? Yes, he did. <laughs> All right. And she starts undoing her uh, wraps for her curls. Yep. Maybe I'll help you out. And then after 20 minutes, once that's done, she'll <laughs> exit her room. Got it. I mean, I'd probably wake up first, right? Because everyone else had been up and down and asleep and up and asleep. Uh, yeah, yeah, most likely. Um, except definitely Maybell, um, the burgomaster, his son, and you. You're all the first people to awaken. Um, I think Wait. that- Why isn't Kefris in my room? Okay, so he had a little bit of an incident last night. What? Um, yeah, well, uh, Steshen took care of it. Well, what happened? Did he have another nightmare? He had another nightmare. Well, I didn't get torn up, so it must not have been that bad. That's what I've been saying. All right, so Stetchen did something? What did he do? <laughs> uh, protection from good and evil. Oh, oh. I'm not sure I know that one. Maybe he can teach me. Wait, does that mean there was an outside force affecting him? It wasn't the beast? That's what I think. Interesting. When did he start having nightmares? He had at least one good night's sleep in Barovia. All right, well, let me, uh, let me think on that. Uh, Breakfast? Absolutely. All right. Everyone awakens. Breakfast is had. What is your plan for the day? Well, um, we haven't gotten a letter from Leo yet, and Stetchen and I said that we would help out the... Well, we would help out the abbot. Um, Irina, if you would like to learn more about what being... A member of the cloth is like, you're more than welcome to join. It sounds like the most interesting thing I'm going to do in this village. All right. So helping out the abbot for us. All right. Um, so that's going to be Kefris, Steshin, Irina, all heading up to the abbey. Who else? Anyone else interested in that? Nah. What are you what are you gonna do, Bartholomew? Uh I guess he asks the abbot, how's the hunting around here? The burgomaster? Yeah. I oh, mean the burgomaster, sorry. Nobody ever leaves the village. Ah. Uh, I think I'm going to go patrol the walls for a while. Please be very careful. We've sighted werewolves. Um, excuse me, are there any horses in the village? Only the ones that came with your carriage. Oh, um, all right, I guess. Um, Speedy, maybe Maybelle and I were going to go for a ride. Would you like to come with us? If I'm not intruding on anything. No, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Uh, no, just a just a nice little ride around and see the village, the wall. Sure. All right. All right. That sounds like fun. Uh, meanwhile, Arbel is sitting next to Ilya, which is the name of the burgomaster's son. Did I ever mention that? Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> She's sitting over next to Ilya, and Ilya's just kind of laughing at whatever she said, and she's like, that wasn't even a joke. Sorry. Uh, he goes over to the burgomaster. 
was just a question. Sorry if it's rude, but was your son soulless? <laughs> N no. Hmm. I I have a hard time believing a soulless person could be returned to life. Hmm. Food for thought. Uh, and he nods his head and walks away. Hmm. All right. In interest of moving things along, uh, let us jump ahead to <laughs> Kefristeshen and Irina going to the Abbey. All right. And Silmi and Bartholomew are going to go for a ride. Inside or outside of the walls? Inside? Because I think, like, the whole nobody leaves is sort of... <laughs> uh, if leave, it's gonna have to be for an extended period before we come back. Yeah, I'm gonna ask the, uh, the people at the gate if we can go outside. I'll allow you to. Oh, and okay. we can come back. Unless the Burgomaster says otherwise. Okay, wonderful. Come on, Speedy, catch up! And she kind of clicks uh, clicks the horse so it goes off in a trot. Yeah. And you guys are just riding the horses without the cart? Yeah. All right, fun. You guys go for a ride. In freaking Barovia. All right, um, and... <laughs> All right. So um, Kefris and Steshin and Irina, um, you have to climb some switchbacks in order to reach the abbey. Um, it is a, a very steep kind of treacherous climb. There's a lot of gravel uh, and you slip every now and then. It's uh, a little unwieldy. Um, and uh, you finally get to the top. There um is... On the way there, I needed to talk to him, so. Oh, absolutely, go for it. Uh, as we're climbing or you're helping me up, um, Stetchin will say, so as I was saying, the beast, the beast is celestial. <clears throat> I, when he manifest last night, I did what I do and I told you, it's from your God. The beast is from your God, please accept it. A gift, I telling you. I, I, will, I will do my best to do so. And I thought I... about it. Uh, it was our third day here. My mess started. Hmm. Okay. And he, he goes to get his notebook out and then realizes we're on a switchback and <laughs> everything. And doesn't. And then, uh, so that's just... I, we talk maybe a little more metaphysical, divine stuff on the way like, hey, uh, uh, surrounding that. Check it out. I got way more scales now. Hmm. Like, just kind of, like, update him on what my body is going through. You and your body. A Kefris Malreska story. You've been keeping notes? May I? Yes. Like, at some point, uh, I'll transcribe your notes. Actually... Well, uh while the nerds have their noses in their books, Irina will just kind of guide you up the switchbacks and like, they'll <laughs> keep you from walking off the side of a cliff. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure we got that bit in there, so. All right. Um, as you approach the Abbey, um, you can see that there is a stone wall that just kind of uh, circles the entire thing, um, except for uh, the part that is right up against the cliff face and um, it gets a lot colder, um, the air gets thinner, um, and there is a little bit of snow crunching in between the gravel as you uh, ascend to uh, the abbey. And um, as you approach, you can hear kind of a muffled conversation between two people, um, and it, it seems a little bit irate. Um, and every now and then it's punctuated by this kind of weird laugh that just goes <laughs> oh. uh, um, 
maybe that's one of the sick people. <laughs> maybe. Uh, and as you approach, you can see there are two pretty short figures. They're covered over in hoods. Um, and uh, one is just kind of like gesticulating wildly at the other. Um, and the other is just kind of like sitting there, like all cozied up in his hood, just kind of like watching and listening to what the other figure is saying. And that figure is all like, listen, I know you think you're better than me, but you're not better than me. You are not better than me. Hail and well met, brothers. Who are you? Uh, and this uh, this uh, woman turns around and you can see just a flash of light from underneath the uh, hood as she just kind of has like these predatory eyes that glare at you from the, the darkness of her cowl. My name is Kefris. Malrezka, this is our friend Maria and Stechen. We were told by the abbot to come and help out in the morning. Uh, the shorter, kind of dopier figure just goes, <laughs> uh, and she smacks him. Is the abbot in? Yeah, the abbot's in. Yeah, I bet you'd like to see him. I would actually, if you, if you wouldn't, if you wouldn't mind helping us find him. Is is this a big place? We've never been. Uh, she turns around, kind of like mumbles to the other figure, and then just starts gesturing for you to come. Um, and as she does so, like her hand uh, is weirdly shaped and kind of furry. Uh. Ooh. Sick indeed. I reach out my senses. You reach out with your senses? Yeah. Um, what do you get uh, for Celestial, Fiend, Undead, Fae? Celestial, Fiend, Fae, Undead. I think that's the four. Mm -hmm. Double check. Oh, I can. It's on the D and D Beyond. You're not getting any of it. Okay. Cool. All right, then I follow along. All right, um, so she leads you in through the north gate. Um, and like the entire time, she's just kind of mumbling under her breath, just like, she, she really is just kind of an unpleasant person, just in general. Um, off to the right, you can see that there are rows and rows of graves. Um, and the abbey itself has two wings. Uh, the wing that's closest to you uh, has a tall tower with a bell set into it, and the other wing just kind of uh, stretches out to the east, um, and beyond that you can see that there are rows with garden plots and such. Um, and she's just kind of like limping along weirdly and leading you to the second gate to uh, actually let you into the abbey proper. And the other guy just kind of like trails a little bit behind you um and and looking back um he just kind of looks up and gives you a, a dopey smile and you see pretty clearly for the first time um that this man looks kind of like a, a beardless dwarf <laughs> only um he's got like patches of gray flesh just going down uh the right side of his face um and instead of a normal mouth he's just got like a wolf's fan uh, a wolf's snout with fangs and you like look down you can kind of see like a a, a brush tipped tail just swishing back and forth behind him how tall are these figures uh less than five feet okay. any kind of history arcana or other knowledge check that i could make to figure them out um I'm gonna say no. Okay. Um, perhaps medicine. Again. All right. I will. I will waste. Uh, not waste, but I will use my knowledge of the ages then to bump that up. 
Ooh, even with the bump, it's only a 17. 17 is really good. I don't know what you're worried about. Okay. Um, I have advantage plus seven, you know, I, I would expect that to be higher, but um, anyway. I, I would say that you've never seen anything like this before, mm. but you have never seen anything like this before outside of Barovia. Mm. Uh, you have seen something like this before and it's walking right next to you. <laughs> Ephraim. <laughs> okay. All right. Hmm. Interesting. But they didn't radiate celestial. No. Okay. All right. Naturally occurring. He's mumbling to himself, just maybe loud enough for Kefris to hear. And he's like, naturally occurring mutation. Kefris hmm. is not going to pay any attention to it because Steshin rambles all the time. <laughs> Talks to no one. Yeah. Okay. This is just one of those, like, it's more polite if I don't ask questions. Okay. All right. What are you Take mumbling it. about back there? Oh, he does that. Quite often, actually. Oh, you're saying he just mumbles all the time. Yes. Yes. I talk to the villagers. And he points, like, he's pointing right at people, but it looks like he's pointing at Listen, I know what mumbling's about. You're mumbling about me. You think I'm ugly, don't you? You think no. you're better than me. No, you're, you're very interesting. I would draw you. I would I would sit and draw every part of you naked if I could. How dare you? <laughs> Kefris' face is white <laughs> as a sheet. Just... Um, and uh, the, the, the guy behind you just like... <laughs> <laughs> For science! <laughs> so As he realizes what Kefris' look is, he's like, he, he says, for science! Look! Let us continue. We have work to do. That we do, Stetchin. That we do. And he just turns and shoots Irina this look of just, what the fuck? She, yeah, she's going to get really close to, uh, she's going to get really close to Kefris and be like, this is certainly the most interesting thing I've seen here. Same. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to jump really quickly back to Bartholomew and kill me. So are, how far are you guys going to go from the village? Are you just... Doing a circle, if we can, around the perimeter. Okay. All right. Um, you can kind of do a semicircle, because this town is nudged up against a mountain mm -hmm. um, and part of the wall just kind of like goes right into the mountain and then like stops there so you could basically do a semicircle up to the mountain and then turn around and go back around to the other side okay uh yeah we'll do that and then um somebody's gonna keep an eye out in the woods okay um, and see if she spots anything out of the ordinary. Perception check. You're conspiring against me now. I like that. Uh, that was a one. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, let's get a perception check from Bartholomew as well. 25. Excellent. Bartholomew, um, as you guys are just sort of riding along on horses. Is, is Bartholomew familiar with horses? Probably. Yeah, he's driven the carriage before, so. Hmm. Okay. And I think, like, maybe, yeah, there are horses in Palaki, so. I mean, there are. Part of the hunter training would have been, like, riding. I guess you can chase down prey on horseback. Like a fox hunt. Yeah. 
I, I feel like that's more noble's work though. Oh well, sorry, I'm, I'm distracting myself. Simple, ri simple writing. <laughs> simple writing. Um, so as you are making your way through the forest, you have the uh, wall to your right, I'll say. Um, you can hear the bell up in the abbey start to uh, chime. And once again, it's just at a completely random time of day. It definitely didn't uh, chime at this time of day yesterday. Just doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to it. Um, and as Silmi and Maybell are just kind of distracted and probably discussing the bell and being all like, oh, that's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. um, you, you catch a red flash out of the side of your eye. He immediately like, turns his head. Was it yeah. just like I caught the red flash? Mm -hmm. You're almost certain that you saw somebody just dart behind a tree. He clicks his horse next to Silmi's. We should return. Why? What did you see? There's someone in the forest. What kind of someone? Could I make out the shape? Well, it's like a humanoid, right? Someone wearing red. I don't know. Someone wearing red. Was Strahd wearing red? No, Strahd likes to wear black. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> um, well, shouldn't we see who it is before we just go running away? You know, there is a saying about curiosity and cats yes curiosity killed the cat and right now oh but satisfaction brought it back yes but we're in barovia so i don't know how well you will take a undead cat back but i think for now it's best if we make our way back into the walls all right uh, Silmi's gonna lag behind a little, like, like ride slower and try and keep an eye out in the woods. Mm -hmm. uh, and see if she can see what or whom it may be. Okay. So Bartholomew being a very responsible uh, guide and hunter um, immediately Turns the, paid to protect y'all. Turns the group around and says, all right, let's get out of here. And still me being the... Uh, <laughs> the Velociraptors are out in force. The, the petulant uh, young lady that she is uh, lags behind and kind of glances over her shoulder and tries to get a, 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 a glimpse at whatever Bartholomew was talking about. Go ahead and give me another perception check. You guys are both in timeout. Is it because I brought out a new dice? Are you are you upset about the new? I'll put the new dice over here, okay? That was another one. <laughs> Amazing. You guys get to go to the back of the group. All right. So um, you turn around to get you know to to glance wistfully over your shoulder, um, mm -hmm. and you just get a peck on the cheek from Maybell. Maybell. It's so nice that we can be so open about all this now. <laughs> it helps that no one's watching. <laughs> I like when you're forward. It's it's very cute. Um, and she's just gonna like wrap her arms around you and give you a little hug. Mm. All right, uh, back up in the abbey. <laughs> then somebody shoots them. <laughs> terrible. You're a terrible, terrible man. Okay, um, back up in the abbey. <laughs> Um, this, this little creature has, um, not stopped bickering since, uh, she met you two, um, and she, uh, bickers at you and she bickers at her buddy and, uh, she throws open the door and continues to bicker and, um, <laughs> the three of you are able to kind of like, you know, smile and nod and get past her and get into the abbey proper, um. <laughs> And then the doors shut behind you, and you can hear her still bickering, and her buddy still going, hee, 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 hee. Ha! 
and what you find before you is what it seems to be some sort of courtyard. There is a, uh, a well with a bucket hanging, um, and there is uh, what appears to be chicken coops on either side. Uh, there are two wings that go off to, like, you could either go to the left wing or to the right wing. The right wing is the one with the bell tower. Um, Another thing that you notice um, is that there are posts where you would normally suspect like an animal to be tied up. Um, there is another squat sort of short creature that's just kind of uh, sitting there with its head down. Um, and it's wearing what appears to be a leather cloak. And around it, there is just like strange markings on the ground in like perfectly like circular positions away from the post hello who are you and kefris will kind of just like well enough away like past where the markings on the ground stop but just get like squat down so that way he's eye level okay um this creature um, kind of acknowledges your presence, but will kind of turn so that its back is facing you. Um, but it is definitely keeping track of where you are. It's all right. All right. Here, and he'll reach into his uh, into his pouch, and he'll pull out uh, a ration, and he'll extend it out towards this creature oh that seems to get its attention it's okay um it, it kind of turns a little bit more towards you and you can see that it's got long stringy hair that just covers most of its face um and it, it does kind of a, a weird hop towards you um and like you can see that it it's got mismatching feet um and and one is actually a cloven hoof as you can see it just kind of peek out from underneath its leather cloak and then like move it forward i'm can you speak it just kind of like dips its head and like seems to be regarding you with eyes that you cannot see my name is kefris i'm here to help and I'll extend the ration out to give it to it. Okay. Uh, give me a persuasion check. God, I hope I'm good at these. That is a 10. Okay. Um, so it inches closer and closer to you. Um, and it reaches out a hand towards you and you realize that the cloak that it's wearing is not a cloak at all that this creature doesn't have conventional arms it just seems to have bat wings um and it reaches out with a long stringy bat wing with the claws tipped at the end um and it plucks that ration out of your hand um but like this this revelation startles you a little bit. And so when it plucks that ration, you kind of jump a little bit and your startle startles it. And um, it like jumps back and you can see the hair flies up and there is, instead of a mouth, just spider mandibles. And it goes <laughs> And it like backs away from you um, and you can see its wings unfurl and it tries to take off. Um, when it jerks suddenly against a chain that is connected to one of its feet. Um, and then it like will flutter there briefly uh, before it lands um, and then turns around and shrieks at you again. Um, and uh, then just kind of like get as far away from you as it possibly can before it's starting to dig into that ration with a, its weird spider mandibles. It's all, it's all yours. Um, and at, at this commotion, there is actually a little bit more commotion coming from those chicken coops. And you can see weird little animal hands beginning to poke out from behind the, uh, the bars of these coops. And you can hear little voices going, food, food. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we 
<laughs> surrounded by monsters. <laughs> yeah, no, you're you're checking you're checking to see what kind of like you know yeah. fake fiend undead whatever. You're not you're getting nothing. This is the weirdest thing to you. Yeah. All right. We need to find the abbot because I have quite a few questions I would like to ask. Yes, fascinating. <laughs> Sure, let's go. Irina? Yes? This is the most interesting thing that we've seen today. I have a feeling that we are going to see more interesting things. I really hope we don't. <laughs> I hope it's just something regular medical, like a man who has like a bum leg or something. I can deal with that. There's... She she looks at you, um, and like she she's got like this kind of disbelieving smile on her face, um, and uh, she just closes her eyes and goes, "Welcome to Barovia," <laughs> and then turns away from you. Oh, you know I don't like that. <laughs> just follow after. I know you don't like it, but it is apt for this situation. <laughs> Uh, which direction do you guys want to go? Uh, are you going to head towards the bell tower, or are you going to go, oh, like, to the other wing? I, whatever one is closest, and then just kind of circumnavigate. Okay. Um, well, the closest one to the pegs that you were just at is going to be the uh, longer wing that's closer to the gardens. So, um... You go to open up that door, um, and you can hear just more voices and uh, animal noises and screeches and kind of insane muttering. Um, there, there's just a lot of noise going on in here, um, and you kind of like get in and look around a corner, and you can see just like this shuffling figure moving down a hallway um and it's just like it's not facing you at the moment but it's got auburn hair hello um this Habit. this shuffling creature uh like turns around and looks at you um and Steshen, you've been like you know <laughs> checking everything out so far um i need to double check and see exactly what this thing is i have a suspicion as to what it is but i oh yeah okay doesn't count um once again you're not getting anything off of this um it it walks like an undead dead it moans like an undead uh it shuffles like an undead but it, it is not undead hmm. interesting are you in need of assistance um and it, it has a vaguely female form um and it just kind of points at you and goes Gah! Kefris, and I'll just begin walking towards it. I'm gonna try and Tarzan the shit out of this. Damn. <laughs> okay. Um, I Irina is just kind of like putting a hand on your shoulder, like, I don't know if this is one of those situations. <laughs> I don't either. But if we run and make any sudden movements, I'm also rather terrified about what that happens. So what do you suggest otherwise? I say, um, I say let him go, Irina. This is fascinating. Every time he says hello, something strange happens. <laughs> okay. Um, this, uh, this thing begins to shuffle towards you. Um, and it, it definitely has hair that, like, is surprisingly nice for a creature that um looks as cobbled together as it does because as it gets, gets closer you can see that it's just got patchwork skin 
that it like all just kind of different colors and such as though it was just pieced together from different humanoid parts. What have they done to you? I'm Kefris. Here to help. Um, to... It continues to shamble towards you um, and just sort of stops. And it is, it is about a full head taller than you are. And it just kind of looks down and its long hair just sort of hangs in your face. You're rather large. Sorry. Uh, do you know the abbot? You... Um, it reaches up and kind of puts a hand on your head. Just like... Um, and it's just got weird, cold, clammy fingers. Um, and then it just kind of like holds onto your horn a little bit and kind of wiggles it. And like your whole head like just kind of like... Mm. <clears throat> Please don't do that. And then it just like pokes the pointy bit a little and tips its head to the side. I'm a traveler. I've come from far away. But I'm still here to do good work. Where have you come from? Uh, meanwhile, there are just still like shrieking and uh, like mad gibbering coming from the rooms that are lining this hallway. Um, it tips its head as though kind of not understanding and it goes Abbot Yes Abbot and Kefris will very large exaggerated nods where um, it points like right into your forehead Abbot No didn't get that far sadly However, Kefris. Kef. Yes. Riss. Kefris. Is. Yes. It's good. And, um, and it just kind of like pats your head. Like, Kefis. Ow, 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 ow. That's fine. It doesn't seem to really know her own strength, this one. Uh, and she swings her gigantic strong arm and nearly whacks Station in the head. Um, and she points back the direction you came and goes, Abbot! Would you like to come with us to see the Abbot? Uh, she just turns around and starts walking back down the hallway. Oh, thank goodness. I'm going to take that as a no. what she said let's go okay you'll just take one last look at this tall lady Stetchin hmm do you know of any reason why she would be so cold hmm I could say things, but I do not know. This whole place has uh, kind of overstimulated me. I need to focus. I'll take it all in in time and make notes. All right. And we'll just go back down the go back down the hallway that we were pointed and told Abbott. All right. Um. You go back down the hallway, um, you cross the courtyard, um, and that spider bat creature just kind of watches as you go by, um, as though, you know, a little <laughs> wary of your presence, but also like, you gave me food, like, that could happen again. Um, and um, you cross to the bell tower. 
there's a door that's closed, I'll knock, but if there isn't, I'll go in. All right. Well, the door's closed, so you knock. Um, and almost as though you have summoned it, the bell starts ringing up in the bell tower. And um, the sort of dull roar and murmur that is the denizens of this abbey uh, grows into a thunderous roar as um, they all start screaming, food, food, food. Um, Abbot! Um, you hear a familiar voice from within. Oh, come in! Okay. <laughs> Just kind of grimace, like, oh, fuck, towards uh, Irina and Stetchen, and then I'll open the door. All right, you open the door um, and you find that there is a stairway um, that leads up into the door or up into the, um, there's a stairway that leads up, there's a stairway that leads down and directly in front of you, there seems to be a dining room. Um, and sitting at the table, um, just kind of as though he were expecting you, is the abbot just with his hands folded in front of him, um, looking as though, Nothing strange has happened. And he stands up and was like, Ah, Kefris, it's good to see you. It's good to see you as well. You met my friend Stetchen and I, Maria. I don't believe that the two of you were properly introduced. Stetchen and Maria. That's right. Hello, Stetchen. It's nice to meet you. Maria, I oh. don't believe I've met you. He just kind of like shakes her hand. Um, and he says, Please come and sit. Of course. Um, there seems to be somebody just wandering. By the way, if that's don't really know how you do things here, but she seemed rather lost. A wandering, she. Well, uh, oh, you, you, the one with the hair. Yes. Tall. Oh, that's this. That's that's Vasilka. She's just keeping an eye on the on the patients for me. All right. She's actually some of my best work. Like rehabilitation? Why is... You could say that. Um, can I roll an insight check? Yeah, absolutely. Please, I'm feeling very uncomfortable. <laughs> I want to know why. <laughs> Now's not the time, boy! I got a 10. You have no idea, but fortunately for you, he clarifies. It's a little more like reanimation. I'm sorry, what? Like I said, it's some of my best work. I've I pieced her together with corpses from down in the village. And I think that I'm even beginning to teach her some manners. Kefris is is going to have his arms by his sides. I um he stands up or well he I guess he was already standing. Um he just kind of spreads his arms and says come there's plenty of work to be done in the Abbey. And that's where we're going to leave off for this week. Oh, oh cool. It sounds like a good time, man. Fuck this guy. Oh, no. All right. Well, thank you, everybody who decided to stop by and enjoy this super spooky Tuesday. Uh, thank you to Danae, uh, as always, for running this marvelous game. Where can we find you? What do you do? My name is Danae Keener. You can find me at DanaeKeener.com. I do nerdy drawings mostly related to D&D. You can also find me here on Mondays playing Coriander the Eldrin Paladin and on Tuesdays running Curse of Strahd. You can also find me next week at Gen Con. DanaeKeener.com. RJ, where can we find you? What do you do? Hi, my name is Kefris and I want to be helpful. <laughs> hey, I'm RJ here on the channel. You can catch me at rjustice 2 on Twitter and Twitch. Where I tweet about the nerdy things in my life and other stuff <clears throat> you can catch me on the monday night game as kale the shatter kai cleric 
in our homebrew setting. And here, of course, as Bartholomew during Christmas Strahd, Speedy, Ranger, Bloodhunter, Human. Um, you can catch me also on Sundays on Pro Restarters Game as G3. We're doing Cypher System with, I'm with LB Hackamup during that game. I don't know where she is on the screen because I have it full screen. You can catch me also on Saturday. We're doing the charity stream. Please remember that. I'll be there in the Dungeon World campaign um, run by GB. Uh, also, I too will be at Gen Con next week. Soon. Yes, and Greybeard, where can we find you? What do you do? Greybeard or Greybeard's Tavern. Check out uh, my schedule and everything on my Twitter, and that's the best place to find me, and they've already said it, but Dungeon World, check us out then, and Power Outage with the author of the game, run by our best uh, bud over here, and uh, we will... Uh, We'll be gaming uh, as much as we can until we're at Gen Con and then watch the Twitter. I'm sure it'll be ridiculous. And uh, maybe some video and other stuff if we can stop, you know, hugging each other. So, because um, we get to meet a lot of us for the first time. So it's going to be amazing. But that's, uh, that, that's all I'm going to say for now. You got plenty of games. You'll find us. Come watch. Yes. LB, where can we find you? What do you do? Hi, I'm LB Hackamup. You can find me at LB Hackamup on the tweets, um, where I tweet uh, pretty much just retweeting the things that I'm in. Uh, you can also find me uh, probably tomorrow doing Dammit Berry's channel on <laughs> Sunday. Uh, we are doing our last uh, episode of our Encounter Roleplay game. Uh, so sad. Uh, and then after, I'll be with RJ on the... Um, on the pro restarter channel and then monday indoor channel and then tuesday maybe i have to sleep because i have to pick up these mofos from the airport so we'll see how it goes uh and then gen con yes and if you have made it this far you probably already know who i am but for all of those of you who don't it is I, the Indoor Adventurer, the showrunner here at twitch.tv slash Indoor Adventures, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and on Saturdays, usually at 11. I say usually, I've done it once, but that's, what I'm, that's the time slot that I'm aiming for. Uh, and this Saturday, you can check out our, uh, our Guild Home Gathering charity stream, which is going to be for mental health awareness. All of the proceeds go to the Trevor Project, the uh, Take This organization, as well as the Tiny Changes organization. So, uh, you can win a lot of really sweet prizes, including dice hex chests, miniature sets, pins, all sorts of stuff. We got tons of it, and it's it's going directly to you guys for being awesome. Um, other than that, we have our Patreon set up, where uh, as we are going to be going into our Patreon supportive podcast called Knights in the Courtyard, where we answer questions not only from each other but also from the community. So, if you have any questions that you would like to ask us, the easiest way to do that is to either just pose them in the chat or if you join our Discord, you can hop in the questions for the Courts channel uh, and leave us a note there. Uh, ask us any questions if you have them, or possibly postulate any theories. But if you're just looking for, like, what Ke what Pokemon does Kefris has? Night in the Courtyard is the best place for you. Uh, so with that, that is our show for the evening. Thank you once again to all these wonderful players for coming by, and thank you to Danae for putting on such a spooky game, and we will see all of you guys next time. Alright, everybody. Bye-bye!